uh, for, to Mr. Caleb Dyberg. Caleb, thank you so much for being on the call here tonight. Uh, we're going to pass the call to you. Or can you hear me right now? I can hear you, Mr. Street. Can you hear me? Absolutely, Caleb. Thank you so much uh, for being here on the call uh, right now. Excited to be on the line with you. And uh, we're going to turn the call to you. Thank you so much for being here with the Rockstar Nation here tonight. Hey, not a problem. I definitely appreciate uh, appreciate the opportunity to get on here. Um, I want to give it back to uh, to Mr. Jeff Street real quick. Like he said, we met a couple of years ago out here in Utah, and uh, phenomenal, phenomenal individual. He came into the marketplace here that I've obviously been working with for the last couple of years, helped us out with the regional training event, leadership, uh, things like that, guys. Everything that he talks about, obviously you can tell that he's done it already in ACN, and that's why he's uh, he's a successful individual that he is. Um, and I have nothing but uh, but respect for him and also for the Mazers and just all of the Rockstar group in general. So I hit start on my Facebook Live. I think it's on there. Um, I'm just refreshing my page so if you guys can sit tight with me for just a second. I'm trying to do a couple of things at once. I'm, I'm flying solo tonight. So give me just one second. All right, perfect. I can see it. Looks like we're on there. Good. So you guys can see I'm uh, I'm actually broadcasting from my office from one of our shipping rooms. You can see the stack of phones behind me. If you're not on uh, Facebook Live, this will be recorded and we'll post it back. Uh, it'll, you'll be able to go back and watch it. A lot of what I'm going to show you tonight, there will be some hands-on things. Um, got a couple little demonstrations, things like that. And we did have a bunch of questions that were submitted and I will get to those at the end. Um, so really quick before I jump into it too much, just give you guys a little bit of background about myself. Um, I have a similar background to Mr. Street. I was in the cell phone industry for a lot of years. I actually worked for Sprint. I actually worked for Sprint during that Sprint Nextel merger. And it's crazy because that has gone down in the books of history as being the worst company merger in corporate America uh, in, in the American history. So I was there. I know what it felt like to lose a lot of business in a very short amount of time. Uh, and that's actually kind of what, what got me started on Cell Platinum. Um, I work with a lot of the top SVPs, COC members, RVPs, and we work hard. Our goal is to go out and support as many uh, flash wireless IBOs as we can, customers, and really help you guys be able to know that when you order a device from our site, it's going to come, it's going to show up, and when it shows up, it's going to work on flash because nothing is more frustrating than going out and sitting down with a new customer, especially if this is a first customer that you're trying to get, and you... You know, there's always there's always going to be a little bit of uh, you know objectivity or a hurdle or you know a little bit of hesitation there. And the last thing you want to do is take them onto eBay, Amazon, Craigslist, something like that. Have them buy a phone and then find out that it doesn't work. So that's why Cell Platinum's here. Uh, that's our number one goal. And uh, if you guys have watched the Flash Wireless website, you've seen we've actually partnered up with ACN. We've made a deal uh, with them to where we are now their premier. You know other option to get phones through. So you can find it right there on your website. You can go to flashwireless.com and you can link through to us that way. But like Mr. Street mentioned, uh, because of working so closely with the Rockstar team, we actually have set up a special tracking site on Cell Platinum. So if you have not been to Cell Platinum before, or even if you have, what I'd like you to do either right now or later on tonight is go to cellplatinum.com and that's spelled C-E-L-L -L, like cell phone and then platinum dot com forward slash rockstar now when you do that it's going to redirect you to a page that we've encoded for the rockstar group you do not have to place an order right now but what i would like you to do is at the top of the page it says account you can click on account and create an account all it asks for is your name email address has you create a password and then it saves your profile on our site and then what that does for us is we know every time that you place an order that you're part of the Rockstar group. And then that also allows us to do special promotions, just catering to the Rockstar group, things like that. It'll help us out a lot. So when you get a minute, make sure you jump on cellplatinum.com forward slash Rockstar. Um, if you've been working with Mr. Street on the West Coast, we also have Rockstar West, which just helps us, helps us differentiate between the two groups. So with that, guys, um, Flash Wireless is a very, uh, it could be a very simple service. It could be a very scary service to go out and sell. 
So I know that there are people on this call that this might be the very first time that you've ever even been on a call with, uh, with, with the Rockstar Group. This could be, you know, you could, have been, you could have been working with these guys for the last 10 years. So I'm gonna try and give a broad overview of Flash Wireless, uh, different, different things, mostly from a hardware standpoint and actually being able to get phones activated onto the service. Now we'll also cover some of the service basics um, and then there will be some follow-up videos that we'll, do, uh, that we'll do after this that will get posted to the Cell Platinum Facebook page. So make sure you jump on there, uh, like our Facebook page and you'll be seeing more videos like this popping up. So what I wanna start with is really just uh, bare bones, basic, how do I find my MEID? Because if you're gonna bring your device over from your current carrier, whether it's Sprint, Verizon, T-Mobile, whether you're with AT&T, Cricket, Boost Mobile, I mean, there's a million different companies out there. Regardless of who you're with, the first thing you're, you're going to wanna do is you're gonna go to flashwireless.com and then you're gonna go to bring your own device and you're gonna be able to check and see is my device eligible? Because if your customer who already has a phone can switch that phone over to your service and now pay their bill through you, help feed children, help feed you, and you can help them earn their Strive for Five, that's a lot easier way to accomplish the service. Now, if they have to buy a device, that's okay too. That's where Cell Platinum comes into play and that's where, that's where we shine. So, really simple way, how do I find my MEID? So most devices uh, that you can take the battery out of or you can take the back off of, I'm gonna hold one up right here. Uh, you can see underneath the back door, you pop the battery out, you're gonna see this barcode. On that barcode, you're gonna see it says MEID. So that's the simplest way to find it. Um, if, it's, if it's a phone that's running on AT&T, T-Mobile, or a network like that, it will say IMEI instead of MEID. That's where you're gonna find that number. Now let's say that instead of using, let's say you've got a phone that, heaven forbid, the battery doesn't come out of. So you're working with, let's say an iPhone. I've got one that's broken here. You'll see the sticker saying it's broken. Don't worry, we won't ship this to you. But right here at the bottom on the back of the iPhone, it's actually printed in small numbers. You can see it has the IMEI and the MEID. Now you won't be able to see that on my video, but you can see where I'm pointing to. It's right there. That's the easiest way to find it. Now, if you can't find it that way, you can go into the software on Android. You're gonna to go to settings. You're gonna to go to about phone and it'll list it there. If you're on an iPhone, some of the newer ones, they don't print it on the back. You can also go to settings, general and about, and it'll list the IMEI and the MEID. So that's the first thing. The next thing, the next step in, in uh, taking that phone and moving it over to Flash Wireless is you're going to need a SIM card. If you're using any type of newer device that is, that is 4G or LTE capable, you have to have a SIM card. Now this is where people get tripped up because they say, oh, well, uh, in the past, Sprint hasn't used a SIM card. Well, Sprint uses SIM cards now. Anybody, anybody that's using a 4G device or an LTE device has a SIM card. Some phones it's built in, most phones it's not. So I'm gonna show you what ACN uses. This is a T-Mobile flash SIM card that I've got right here that I'm holding up, you'll be able to see it when you watch the video. It's called a triple punch SIM card. Now the reason it's called a triple punch is very easy. It comes apart into three pieces. So I'm actually gonna break this one apart really quickly so I can show you the three different sizes. So the first one that you're gonna punch out is the largest one. Now typically this SIM card, only this size of a SIM card will only be used on a basic phone on T-Mobile meaning a, you know, a non-LTE phone, but like a flip phone, uh, a phone that slides open and has a keyboard. Most of the older phones on T-Mobile will take the large SIM card like this. The next size that it can break down to, I break it out slowly on there so you can see, pops out. This is now what they call a micro SIM card. So this is the middle size. This is gonna fit a lot of your Samsung Galaxy S4s, S5s, uh, your Galaxy Notes, um, and other manufacturers like that. Now, if it takes a smaller SIM, there, it breaks out one more time, and it becomes what you call a nano SIM card. And I'm actually gonna hold up the nano SIM card and the little piece, of the, the little piece that I broke it out of. Now, sometimes when you go to pop the SIM out of the triple punch holder, you'll accidentally break out that little nano piece. That's okay. You can take it and you can slide it back inside of the little piece that it came out of. 
And this works for Verizon and for T-Mobile because they both use a triple punch SIM card. You can slide it back in. It now becomes the micro SIM card. You can insert it into the phone and it'll work just fine uh, like that. You don't have to go out and get a new SIM card. Now, while we're talking about SIM cards, if your customer is on Sprint service or Boost Mobile service and you take them onto the website, you go to the bring your own device, you put in their MEID, and it says that their device is approved to come over to Flash. You do not need a new SIM card. So with Sprint, you can reuse the SIM card that's already in the phone. As long as that phone's working on Sprint just fine, you can port it over and you can reuse it. Even if there's no service on the phone, but it's the correct SIM card that goes with that phone, you can use it again on Sprint. Now, when it comes to T-Mobile and it comes to Verizon, you have to change the SIM card. So if you come across a customer that's on retail T-Mobile, they want to switch over to Flash, they want to become a customer, you have to give them one of these Flash wireless T-Mobile SIM cards, which they're either uh, maroon or purple, or you need to give them a Verizon Flash wireless SIM card if they're on retail Verizon. You cannot reuse their existing T-Mobile SIM card or their existing Verizon SIM card. Furthermore, if you use this uh, if you use this T-Mobile Flash SIM card and there's some type of activation issue or the customer ends up canceling and you somehow got the SIM card back from them, you cannot reuse this on another customer account. So T-Mobile and Verizon, the SIM cards are one-time use and they have to be switched out when a customer is coming from uh, retail T-Mobile or retail Verizon over to Flash Wireless. Now another question we get asked a lot is, what's on a SIM card? So that's very easy. The SIM card does not store any data as far as pictures, videos, text messages, things like that. What gets stored on your SIM card is your service profile. Meaning on Verizon and T-Mobile, you could simply remove your SIM card from whatever device you're using, move it over into a new device or a replacement device, and immediately your service will be active, your phone number will be the same, uh, this is great for if you get in a situation where your phone breaks, you just need to pop it out. You pop the SIM card out, move it over to another one, you're back up and running. doesn't matter if it's the middle of the night. You don't have to call Flash. You don't have to get onto your back office. You don't have to do anything. You literally just take your SIM card and move it over to the new device, and now you're up and working again. Next question that we get asked a lot is how can I tell if my device is unlocked? So, And we see this a lot because of the way that the T-Mobile... Uh, bring your own device feature works on Flash Wireless's website. Now, many of you have gone to the website, you've clicked on, on uh, you know, shop devices, and you've gone to the purple network, which, just as a side note, when we're talking about these services on Flash, legally, they're not allowed to say, this is T-Mobile, this is Verizon. So when you go to the website, you're going to see T-Mobile is always referred to as purple or magenta, uh, they also refer to it as the uh, Discover Fastest Nationwide 4G LTE. That's T-Mobile. Now, when they talk about Verizon, they couldn't use red, so they had to use green. The color green is Verizon. I guess it stands for money. I don't know. But they refer to it as America's largest and most reliable network. And then the third network is Sprint, who Sprint doesn't care that they use their name, so it's actually referred to as the Sprint Nation Nationwide Network. Now, when you go on to Flash Wireless and you go to T-Mobile and you're checking to see if your device is unlocked, unfortunately, their device check does not actually tell you if the device is unlocked. Uh, I don't know what the programming is behind it or why it was built the way that it is, but you could put in a, 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 the IMEI of a device that's not unlocked and it will tell you that it's approved for use on Flash. It'll let you go through the order process, unfortunately, and then when you get to the end and you put the, you've already paid, you put the customer's Flash T-Mobile SIM card in there and you're waiting for the number to port over, you get the email that says, hey, it's active, you should be able to use it, but the phone still won't work and you're wondering why is it not working? It's because the device may not be unlocked. So I'm going to grab another phone really quick and I'm going to show you an error message so you know when the device is not unlocked. So if you're watching this, uh, if you're watching this on our on our live feed, you can see I'm holding up an iPhone, and there's a message on here that says SIM card not supported. So what I do is, I, if I run across a customer that's using 
uh, they're using T-Mobile, they're using AT&T, they're using Metro PCS, Cricket, uh, H2O, any company like that, and they want to go to Flash T-Mobile or they want to go to Flash Verizon, before I even sit, before I even put the order in or help them put the order in, the first thing that I do is I pop their SIM card out and I'll show you how to do that because many of you have probably never had to take a SIM card out. It's very simple. So on your device, iPhones, it's right here on the side. You're gonna take, you can take, uh, you can take a safety pin, you can take a paper clip. We have these cheap little tools. You're gonna push it in, the little drawer pops out, you're gonna pull it out, you're gonna install the correct size SIM card and you're gonna slide it back in the phone. Now what you're looking for is you're looking for an error message. Now you can see on this iPhone that I'm holding up, there's an error message. It says SIM not supported. So what that means is this is a, an iPhone 6 Plus that is an eight, I know it's an AT&T iPhone, but when I put a, uh, a Verizon SIM in it, this is the error that it gives me. If I put a T-Mobile SIM in it, it will give me the same error. I know now that even if the device portal says it's approved, if I try and port this customer from AT&T to Flash Wireless, their number's gonna get moved over and they're not gonna be able to use the service right away. Probably gonna be really unhappy. So that's why we check it this way. Now, if you're using a Samsung device like this one that I'm holding up, same thing. You can put a non-active Flash SIM in it ahead of time, power it up. With Android devices, if the phone's not unlocked, as soon as it turns on, it's gonna come up and it's gonna say enter network pin and it's asking for a six digit code. That means that the device is not unlocked. You're not going to be able to move it to Flash, uh, T-Mobile or Flash Verizon. So before you do anything, you need to get that device unlocked. There's a lot of different ways to get it unlocked. If you have questions, you can always email us. Our contact info is on our website. You can also call us and we can help you out that way. The most common, uh, the most common locked phones that we run across are AT&T locked phones. Now, if you have a customer that's on AT&T, They've already paid off their device. There's a simple website they go to. It's att.com forward slash unlock. They put in their customer info. Usually within 24 hours, AT&T will unlock the device for them for free. And then at that point, you could, you could take it to, to Flash T-Mobile. If it's a newer iPhone, you should be able to take it over to uh, Flash Verizon and potentially even Flash Sprint. And we'll cover, I'll cover some of that a little bit later. So, those are the basics of how to, how to find, if, find out if your device is unlocked, uh, what's on a SIM card, how the triple punch SIM card works, how to find your device MEID. So guys, my biggest, uh, my biggest thing that I teach people or the, the best thing I could recommend to you, and I know if you talk to Mr. Street, you talk to Pat or, or Michael Mazur or any of the leaders in the company, the easiest way to experience this is to simply do it yourself. So you might have just gotten into ACN, you might have just joined the team and you're thinking, you know what, I've already got a device, I'm on a corporate plan, I'm here, I'm there, I'm whatever. I'm not in a situation where I'm ready to move my personal number over. My suggestion is jump on our website, find the cheapest phone we offer for whichever network you wanna try, sign it up as a second service. Because the great thing is it's month to month, it's gonna give you, it's gonna give you one of your services that you need to get qualified, but more importantly, it's going to allow you to go through the entire ordering process so you know how to order the service and what questions it's gonna ask because nothing's worse than having a customer call you and say, hey, I'm on your website, I'm trying to order this service and I'm on this screen, where do I go to next? And you have no idea because you haven't even ordered the service for yourself. It's pretty embarrassing. So jump on, grab a phone, grab a phone out of the drawer, whatever you do, get a device on flash wireless. The other reason you wanna do that is because when you go to a home meeting, you wanna have a device that's active on flash. So when you have somebody that says, hey, I have Verizon, how do I know if prepaid flash Verizon is gonna be the same thing? And you can pull out your device and say, here it is, take it, you know, test drive it, get on the internet, see if you can make a phone call, see if it sounds the same, see if it works the same. Check out my T-Mobile phone, check out my Sprint phone, whichever service is the strongest in your area, that's what you're going, you're going to want to do. Now moving on, I'm gonna give you guys a little bit more in-depth information on each of the three networks. I'm gonna move through them one at a time. I'm going to start with Sprint. Sprint is the thorn in the side when it comes to reusing a customer's device. This is also one of the places where you can get burned by buying phones online the easiest. So uh, about a year and a half, two years ago, Sprint changed the way that they were doing their devices. Rather than having two-year contracts, and that's what locked up your device, 
They decided to do away with contracts just like T-Mobile and they will finance the device to you. Now, the bad part about that is, is as soon as a phone gets tagged as financed in Sprint's billing system, it's very hard to move that device over to Flash Sprint. And their devices are not unlocked and 99% of the time, Sprint will not unlock their device for you. Even if you've already paid it off and you call them up before you cancel the service and you say, will you unlock my device? They know that you're leaving, you're going to another company and they will make up any excuse in the book. So don't, don't expect to take your normal Sprint phone and take it over to Verizon or take it to T-Mobile because it's probably not going to happen. That being said, Sprint has an amazing plan on Flash, the Pro 50 plan that includes the hotspot, 50 gigs of unthrottled data. It's actually been one of the best selling plans that Flash has ever rolled out and we are selling a ton of Sprint devices. So with Sprint, if you happen to have, you, you bought a Sprint, uh, Sprint device somewhere else, you didn't buy it from Cell Platinum, now you need a SIM card. The unfortunate thing is Sprint uses 14 different SIM cards. They're kind of crazy. So you cannot just go on eBay and buy any Sprint SIM card and put it in the phone and expect it to work. If you need a Sprint SIM card, you can jump on cellplatinum.com we cover every Sprint SIM card that they make, even some of the outdated ones that they don't make anymore. You can purchase them directly through our website. You just put in the model number of what you need. We'll get it sent out to you. Make sure you have the correct one. If you buy the device from cellplatinum.com, you don't even have to worry about it because every device that we ship already has the SIM card pre-installed, ready to rock and roll. With their finance devices, if your customer is currently making payments to Sprint on a phone that they bought from Sprint, they cannot move that device over to Flash Wireless. No tricks, no hopscotch, no way around that. If they owe Sprint money, that device cannot be moved over until it is completely paid off. And even then it can take 60 to 90 days before they can move that device from regular Sprint onto Flash Wireless Sprint. So just be prepared for that. If you're sitting down with customers that have newer Sprint devices, they tell you, oh, I'm not in a contract typically means they finance their phones and their phones probably are not going to transfer over and they're gonna to need to purchase a different device. So uh, from there, we're gonna move forward. We're gonna move on to Verizon. We're gonna spend a little bit of time there because Verizon uh, I think is, is probably one of the most popular services and it has probably the most questions that come along with it. So uh, with Verizon, SIM cards, we've already talked about it. I'm gonna talk about it a little bit more because SIM cards are uh, when it comes to people calling with questions or concerns, it usually relates to a SIM card. So again, Verizon SIM cards. If the phone is on Verizon currently, you cannot reuse their Verizon SIM. You need to get a flash wireless one. You can buy those either in your back office uh, in a five pack, or you can buy those, uh, you can buy them individually from Cell Platinum. You can also pick them up at the international events, places like that. You want to have some of those on hand so that you're ready to rock and roll. So you're going to you're gonna go on, you're gonna put in their order, you're gonna check and make sure their device can be switched over. Now the great thing about Verizon devices is this. A Verizon device from the factory is already unlocked. It doesn't matter if it's an iPhone, doesn't matter if it's a Samsung or if it's an LG or anything else. From the factory, those devices are unlocked. There's no, there's no unlocking or requesting unlocks that, re that is required with a Verizon device. It's just the way that Verizon purchases their devices. So what this means is if your customer has a Verizon iPhone 5C or newer, that phone works on Flash Verizon. It'll also work on Flash T-Mobile and it will also work uh, on Flash Mobile in Mexico. Now, if they're using a Samsung device, 90% of those you can also take to Flash T-Mobile. You can also take uh, to Flash Mobile in, in Mexico as well because they have the GSM capability built into them without getting too technical. There are some, uh, some settings that you have to go in and change on the Android based phones that you don't have to worry about on an iPhone because when you put in the SIM card, uh, Apple pushes all the correct settings to the phone automatically for you. So uh, the big thing on Verizon that everybody wants to know about, everybody wants to talk about is finance devices because that's what the carriers are doing now. Hey, don't sign a contract, just come in, pick up whatever phone you want, just pay us $20 a month, right? The problem, there is no problem with that until the customer decides that they want to leave. So uh, as many of you know, if your customer currently has a finance device on Verizon 
or even if they don't have a finance device but they're using retail Verizon when you put in their MEID and their new SIM card number on the Flash Wireless website to port their number over and get them a new service uh, through Flash, you're going to get a little message that pops up that tells you that this is a current Verizon customer. And because it is, that customer is limited. They can only sign up for the $79 plan or for the family plan. Now that could, that could deter a lot of people. So there's actually a workaround to where you can take an existing Verizon customer you can move them to flash wireless they can sign up on the cheaper plan but more importantly you can get a hundred percent commission because if you take them over onto that seventy nine dollar plan or that family plan it's only fifty percent commissionable if they're coming from regular verizon to to flash verizon so this is our workaround now by no means is this in uh you know this isn't something that flash necessarily wants everybody to go out and preach about but at the same time, it's also not against the rules. I verified that before the phone call because the last thing I want to do is to steer you guys wrong. So I did verify that with, with Flash that I'm okay to share this information and teach it. So here's our workaround. And a lot of people will refer to it as hopscotch. You may have heard that term. You may not. Here's what we're going to do. You're going to get a Verizon device. Now, obviously, this one says Sprint. So that's not a good example. But pretend that this one says Verizon on the back. And this is my Verizon iPhone 5S that I bought, and it's a spare phone. It doesn't have any service tied to it right now. Nobody's numbers on it. It's not active in the flash wireless billing system. What I'm going to do is this. Now, this works whether the customer has paid off their Verizon device or not. So a lot of you guys are wondering, what if my customer still owes Verizon money? This is what you're going to do. This is how you're going to get them over to flash right now. And then we'll, we'll tell you what happens with the money that they owe Verizon. So you're going to jump on flashwireless.com. You're going to put in their MEID. Now, remember, I know this says Sprint. I don't want to confuse you. So I'm going to grab a Verizon phone. All right. We're going to take this Verizon LG G3 that I've got here as a sample. You're going to put that MEID in on Flash Wireless's website and say that that is your customer's device. Then you're going to grab your Flash Wireless Verizon SIM card. You're going to get the number off the barcode. You're going to put that into the website. You're going to go ahead and port their number over just as if, you, as if this was really their device. Now what's going to happen is when their number ports from regular Verizon to Flash Wireless Verizon, all of that information is now on this SIM card. Now, all that we're gonna do is we're gonna take this SIM card, we're gonna put it back in the customer's original device. We don't even have to put the SIM card into this phone, this dummy phone or sample phone, whatever you wanna call it. Once I put this SIM card that's active on Flash Verizon into the customer's existing Verizon handset, Within five minutes, Flash's billing system will know that this device is not active on their account and the MEID will be released and I could use it again and again and again and again, as many times as I want because as soon as I take that active SIM card that I activated, put it back into the customer's original device, that frees up my dummy phone, but more importantly, your customer is now using their device that they had financed through Verizon and they're on Flash Wireless Verizon. You just got 100% commission for it. You're not getting cut back to 50 and they have the option of going on any Flash, Ver Flash Verizon plan that we offer. So what happens to the money that they owe Verizon? Well, three to four weeks from now, your customer's gonna get their final bill in the mail because what Verizon's gonna do is the minute they port the number over to Flash, that cancels your customer's account. Your customer is gonna get a bill for any remaining balance that they owe on that device. So if they just bought an iPhone 7 last month, they're probably gonna get a bill for $620, $630. You need to prepare your customer for that, but also prepare them that when that bill comes in, the customer can call Verizon directly. Hey, I know I canceled my service. I know I owe you the money on that phone. I can't pay all of it today. Are you willing to let me break that up and make those payments over three months or four months? 
The good thing is a cell phone bill does not report to the credit bureau. So your customer spreading that final bill over three or four months will not affect their credit score. It will not even show up on their credit report anywhere. The only way it ever affects their credit is if they don't pay the bill, they get that bill in the mail and they just say, you know what, I don't care. I already went to Flash Verizon. I'm not gonna pay the bill. 90 days goes by, Verizon hasn't gotten any money. They're gonna send you to collections. Now that's on your credit report and that's affecting your customer. So set the expectation ahead of time. Let them know, yeah, we can take you over right now. We can switch you over. We can get you that cheaper plan. We can get you the data. We get you whatever it is that they're looking for that they're switching to be your customer. Just let them know that they are going to get a bill for the total amount that they owe still on the phone. But typically, you can pay that off. You can break it up however you want. Uh, Verizon is very... Uh, I wouldn't say lenient, but they're willing to work with people because at the end of the day, they would rather get their money for the device than not get their money for the device, okay? Now, if your customer calls Verizon ahead of time and says, I'm going to cancel my service, I wanna make payments on the device, Verizon's gonna tell them no because why would they give them the option to leave, but they would still work with them after the fact. Just don't call in ahead of time. It doesn't really do anything. It'll confuse or scare your customer. So that's how you do it. Now, one of the Q&A questions that we received early was does this work on a business account? Absolutely it works on a business account. It's the same process. So I'm gonna run through it again. You have to have another phone that is approved for Verizon. Has to have a clean MEID. You're gonna take that MEID, you're gonna put it in on the device checker. Once it says approved, enter a new SIM card number, go ahead and port the customer's phone number over. Once you get the email from Flash letting you know that the customer service is active, you're simply going to install that SIM card in their original device. The other nice thing about this is if they have uh, if they have voicemail and they're on an iPhone, their voicemail will actually stay on the phone. They will not lose it if by transferring this way. Now, if it's any type of other phone where the voicemail is not stored on the phone, it'll be gone. Uh, so unfortunately, I know that was another one of the Q&A questions. Uh, you know, what if there was a voicemail from a deceased sibling or grandparent or something like that that you're trying to save? If that's the case, don't risk it. Make sure the customer gets it recorded off of their voicemail before you switch them around. The last thing you want to do is, is have somebody lose something like that. If it's on an iPhone, you can back it up to your computer uh, and it'll be accessible through iTunes. There's some other programs that can access it as well. So now we're going to move on to uh, the T-Mobile service. Now this service as I covered in the beginning with unlocked and, and not unlocked devices, this service can actually, uh, it can be tricky if you're not, if you don't know what you're doing ahead of time. Because we see it all the time. Even at the national event in Charlotte, there were two or three customers that activated flash service there with their own devices that were on Cricket or on AT&T because they thought they were unlocked. And then they came over to our booth and they said, oh my gosh, my service doesn't work. I just ported it over and I put my Flash T-Mobile SIM card in here, but my phone won't take it. Like, what do I do? Can you unlock my device? Unfortunately, we can't unlock those devices right there in the moment. And so what they had to do was actually just purchase another device and then we were able to help them, uh, you know, over the last couple of days to get those devices unlocked so that they could continue using the device that they wanted. So T-Mobile SIM cards are gonna work exactly the same. This is the sample SIM card I've been showing all night. It's a pink SIM card. It could also be purple, just depending on when you bought it. Um, and it also comes in a triple punch, so you can break it down to whatever size that you need. Has to be changed out. You cannot reuse a regular T-Mobile SIM card. Even if they have a brand new regular T-Mobile SIM card, it will not work because these Flash Wireless ones are how T-Mobile knows that the customer came from Flash Wireless so that they know to pay Flash every month and then therefore Flash pays you. So make sure you have some of those SIM cards on hand. Same deal as Verizon. They're five for 25 in your back office. You can buy them from sellplatinum.com individually. You can also buy them at the national events. Stock up, have five or 10 of them on hand so that when you come across those customers that are ready to jump, that you have what you need. Now th th that, that advice goes to everything. If you can afford it, have some Verizon SIM cards, have some T-Mobile SIM cards and uh, even have maybe have a couple of devices on hand. If you find someone that has a lot of Flash customers, they're going to tell you the way they did it is because they had devices on hand, and I'll get into that in a minute. So when it comes to T-Mobile, T-Mobile also finances their devices just like Verizon, just like Sprint. However, if someone is currently active on retail T-Mobile and you want to switch them to Flash T-Mobile, you don't have to do the hopscotch method. 
all that you have to do, all that you have to do is enter in their device IMEI and their flash wireless, uh, you put in the flash wireless SIM card ICC ID number. You're gonna port their number over. They can use the same phone. There's no restriction on plan. There's no 50% compensation that you have to worry about. You can take customers from regular T-Mobile to Flash T-Mobile all day long. If they're already active on regular T-Mobile, that device does not have to be unlocked. You can simply move it over to, regu or to Flash T-Mobile. Everything's gonna work out. You're gonna be fine, okay? Now, if their device is financed, it's just like Verizon, they're going to get a bill in the mail. And uh, Flash, or uh, regular T-Mobile actually has a little more control over their devices. So when your customer gets that final bill in the mail from T-Mobile that says, hey, you know, you just bought an iPhone 7 in September, you switched to another carrier, uh, you know, you owe us 500 and some odd dollars, your customer needs to call and make some type of payment arrangement with T-Mobile or T-Mobile has the ability to shut the phone service off on that phone. Even though it's on flash, they have the capability in their system to flag that phone as non-paid. As soon as that happens, your customer's gonna wake up, look at their phone, and the phone's gonna say no service, and at that point, it's a paperweight. You can go back and pay the balance off with T-Mobile, and then you fight with them to get it turned back, uh, to get that restriction removed. The easiest thing to do is if you take someone from regular T-Mobile to Flash, they owe money, make sure that when they get that final bill in the mail, do not ignore it. Call T-Mobile, they're willing to work with you. It's the same situation. They would rather get paid their money over the next two, three, four months for that device than lock up a $500 device and know that the customer is probably not gonna pay them because now it's a paperweight, they're upset, they don't wanna deal with it, and they just walk away and they completely lose out. So, now, getting into uh, hybrid devices, multi-carrier devices, that is where Cell Platinum is a pioneer. So we were the first of any of the, uh, the Flash wireless providers, even before Flash themselves started doing it, we were the first ones to offer a phone that works on all three networks. So if you go to our website right now, you go to cellplatinum.com, when you land on the website, you're gonna see a big banner for the hybrid iPhone 5C. That's not the only hybrid phone that we sell. Every single iPhone that we sell on our website, we have a hybrid version of it. So the 5C, the 5S, the 6, the 6 Plus, you know, all the different models of the iPhone, we offer a hybrid version. What does that mean? That's a, that's a very common question. That means that you could have that device on hand. So, we've got them back here in a bin. You could have that iPhone 5C that we sell for $179. You could have that on hand. So then, when you're talking to a potential Flash customer and they wanna switch over, let's say that for some reason their device isn't supported, they need to buy a device. You can activate them then and there using that device, get the service right away. They can go to sellplatinum.com and order their own device. They could, you know, they could source it somewhere else. Hopefully it comes from Cell Platinum. Uh, you know, that's, that's what I do. So that's where we want them to get it. But you could use that hybrid device on any of the three networks. So then you don't have to buy three different phones in case the customer says T-Mobile or in case the customer says Verizon or in case they say Sprint. No matter which carrier they wanna go on, you have a phone that will work for that service. It also makes sense to have on hand in case one of your customers breaks their device. Unfortunately, that happens, and because of the way that Flash works, there's not a Flash wireless store on every corner that they can run to and just pick up another device. So we definitely recommend having one, two, three phones on hand. If you can only get one, make it a hybrid device. Make it easy on yourself. You can cover all your bases by having that hybrid device on hand. So with that, guys, I'm gonna jump into uh, the Q and A's. I've got a stack of them right here. I've highlighted a bunch of them. I'm not gonna have time to hit them all. The ones that I don't hit uh, or any follow-up questions from tonight's video, uh, you can obviously comment on the video. It looks like there's quite a few comments. Uh, if, we have, if we have time, I'll wrap around and grab any of those comments on the video. Uh, but more importantly, we will make some follow-up videos. It'll be, you know, they'll be posted Facebook Live. We'll also make sure that they get posted to the Rockstar group um, and they'll get shared around that way. We're really excited to be working with you guys. I think we're gonna do a lot of good things together. So, uh, first question. I have a question I would like clarified. If a customer has an active account, no contract, is it correct that when transferring to Flash, they cannot take the $59 package? It has to be the $79 or family package. Now this, uh, this question didn't specify Verizon. I'm assuming that's what they were talking about because on Sprint and T-Mobile, there is no restriction. So, uh, on Verizon, we've already covered that. 
if they want to bring that same device and port their number, you have to use the hopscotch method. Otherwise, the customer would have to choose the $79 plan or the family plan. If they want to choose a lower plan, you've got to have a device that you can use the hopscotch method. Again, that hybrid iPhone 5C that we sell, you can use that as the as the device for the hopscotch. And once you put their SIM back in their old phone, your, your uh, hybrid phone is freed up and it's ready to use again. So that's the answer to that question. Um, next question. Does the hopscotch release work on your business phones with Verizon if they still owe money or just on residential? So again, you can use the hopscotch. Doesn't matter if they're on a residential account or on a commercial account. You can use that to pull their number over to Flash Verizon and get the 100% commission uh, and allow them to choose whichever plan they want. Now, if they still owe money, like we talked about, they're going to get that final bill. It typ typically takes 30 days to get that final bill. They do need to pay that device off. I'm not telling you to move customers over and have them get stuck with a couple hundred or a couple thousand dollar bill. That's not what we're going for. Those will be unhappy customers and they'll leave you just as fast as they came. So just make sure you set the expectation. They're gonna get that bill. They can call and make some payment arrangements. They can work it out uh, and they'll be happy. Uh, the next question, what do we do when someone owes money on a lease or is still in a contract? What are the best ways around this? So as I've said a few other times, they still owe the money. Now we can get the service right away and we can prolong them having to pay the money. We can get, you know, you, they can get it broken up over a couple of months, but at the end of the day, they still have to pay the money. There's no way to skip out on that. Uh, what do we do if someone has a voicemail saved that they don't want to lose, like a voicemail from a deceased family member or loved one? This could also carry over into uh, something that I used to see at Sprint is people would come in and say, I have a voicemail on my phone. I need to get it for, uh, you know, for a court case or evidence or whatever it is. Uh, there's different apps out there now in the Android app market that make it so you can save voicemails. There's also applications available that if you back your iPhone up with iTunes, you can access on your computer, you can access everything that's in that iTunes backup without having the device. It'll save your voicemails, pictures, text messages, everything like that. Uh, and maybe that's what we'll do in one of these follow-up videos. I'll show you how that actually works. But that's what you would do um, to, to retrieve those voicemails or to save them for whatever reason you may have. Um, the next question. If you have a music app that you pay for monthly on your Verizon bill, how does that app transfer over to Flash? The user does not want to lose it. Unfortunately, there's no happy answer on this question. If there's a Verizon specific app that the customer is using, when they switch to Flash Verizon, the app is no longer going to function. The reason being, there's no way for Flash to bill them for that service. It's not an agreement that they have with Verizon. It's the same way on T-Mobile, it's the same way on Sprint. It's also on their phone, uh, you know, there's a little My Verizon app that tells you how much data you've used and when your bill's due and things like that. That app will no longer function correctly once they come to Flash Verizon because Flash doesn't have the ability to access those applications. And not, that's not part of the contract that Verizon gives their third-party resellers. So, sorry I don't have a better answer for you there, but that is the answer. Um, next question. Where can we find a list of iPhone models that are truly interchangeable between networks? What exactly needs to be done to the phone to go to another carrier? So this is a really good question. On the newer iPhones that are sold for Verizon or that are bought directly from the Apple Store. So your customer goes down to the Apple Store, they buy the phone there and then they activate it on whichever carrier they want. Typically those devices, if it's an iPhone 6S, 6s plus 7 or 7 plus typically those devices are ready to go you can move them typically you can move them directly to sprint you can move them to t-mobile you can move them to verizon because when they buy it at the apple store it is 100 percent unlocked now if the customer's phone will uh is accepted on verizon it's accepted on t-mobile but the meid is failing the approval wizard on sprint you can email us again that contact info is available on the website and for a small fee, four or five dollars, we can submit that MEID over to Sprint and we have a way to get it added into their database so then you could use that device there. Now when it comes to Android devices, unfortunately there are not very many that are interchangeable. Um, you can see the ones that Flash offers on their website which are also the same models that we sold at the Charlotte Convention. That would be the Motorola G4, 
the Motorola G4 Play, and the Motorola G4 Plus. Now, if you buy those devices from Flash, they're already set up to go between all carriers. They also work in Mexico on Flash Mobile. If you buy that Motorola G4, because I know you can buy them on Amazon and they're cheaper than you get them on Flash, problem is they're loaded up with ads, so every time you unlock the device screen, you get spammed with Amazon ads. So that's not really worth the savings. But on top of that, those devices do not transfer to Sprint without extra work being done to get the MEID into the Sprint database. So the real underlying question of this is, if you want a phone that works on all carriers, you can buy one of the hybrids from sellplatinum.com or if they have a newer, uh, if they have a newer, you know, a seven or one of the 6S uh, models, they should work, but they don't always work. Let us know, we can help you out there. Um, next question, if a Sprint customer is changing to Flash Sprint, are there times when the existing SIM card does not have to be changed? Every time, if the customer's device says it's approved, you can reuse the SIM card that's in the device. Uh, Sprint SIM cards are reusable as many times as you want, as long as there's no service assigned to them. How do we know Sprint phones need a new SIM and which don't? They shouldn't require a new SIM ever. Uh, if for some reason you have the phone, it doesn't have a SIM card in it, let us know. We carry all the models. You can order it right off our website. Just the SIM card will ship it out to you. Next question. Is the blue phone compatible with the Sprint network? No. Is it compatible with Verizon? No. It's a GSM. All of those phones are manufactured as GSM devices, meaning they'll work on Flash Mobile in Mexico. They'll work on, uh, on Flash T-Mobile here in the US. We haven't seen any so far that are manufactured with a CDMA chipset in them to work on Sprint and Verizon. How do I unlock my phone if I'm still paying off the phone through T-Mobile? The good news is if you're, if you're on regular T-Mobile and you wanna to go to Flash T-Mobile, you don't have to unlock it. It's ready to move. If you want to take it, if it's one of the newer devices and you want to take it to, uh, you want to take it to Verizon or potentially to Sprint, so you have to pay that device off before you move it, and then you can request that T-Mobile will unlock it, and they'll unlock it for you. Typically takes 24 to 72 hours. There's no charge if your T-Mobile account is still active and in good standing. They'll do it for free. Um, next question. Sometimes. Flash T-Mobile phones cannot send or receive picture messages. How do we fix that? I'm actually really excited about this question because ACN and Flash Wireless uh, get, uh, have made some big improvements to what they have for customer support. So I'm gonna walk you through this. I'm not gonna show you my screen, but you should be able to do it. If you go to flashwireless.com and up in the right-hand corner, it says My Account. You click on that, a little drop-down is going to drop down, and it's asking you which carrier you're, you're on. The top one says, I am on the fastest nationwide 4G LTE network. If you click on that, that's going to take you to Flash Wireless T-Mobile homepage. Now, once you land on that page, there is a button at the, towards the top. There's a blue bar that says Shop Devices, Bring Your Own Device, Shop Plans, and Support. If you click on support, and then you're going to scroll down under troubleshooting, it says MMS picture mail slash group messaging is not working on my Apple device. Underneath that it says MMS uh, picture mail slash group messaging is not working on my Android device. Now, depending on if you're on iPhone, click the iPhone link. If you're on Android, click the Android link. What that's going to do is it's going to walk you through step by step the changes that you need to make on your phone so that you can send picture messages and also for the internet to work. Now typically the only time you have to do this is if you're bringing say an AT&T device onto Flash T-Mobile or you're using a Verizon Unlock device over to T-Mobile or a Cricket or Net10 or you know any of those other carriers. Uh, we specifically see it on Android a lot of times. Uh, iPhone usually can set all the settings automatically by itself and you don't really have to, to mess with it. But if, you, if your service is active on Flash T-Mobile, you can make phone calls, but your internet's not working, maybe you're having problems with picture mails, uh, text messaging, that's where you wanna go. All the settings are there uh, and it's right there. You don't have to log into your account, anything like that. It's very easy to access. Um, we've got two questions left and I'm gonna try and wrap this up pretty quick. Uh, my question is with data only for iPads. Can we offer that service and what is the process? Okay, so this is an easy, well, a fairly easy one. You can put, you could put uh, an iPad directly on Verizon. They actually have special plans for it. 
Um, it only works on the iPad 4 and then some of the newer iPad Airs and the Mini Airs. When you put in the MEID, it recognizes that it's a tablet and it'll show you the tablet only plans. Now, if they're already on a family plan and they just wanna add, let's say that they're on the Verizon $99 family plan with 12 gigs of data, they just wanna add their iPad on there and just pay the $15 a month. This is where your dummy phone comes back into play. You're gonna use the MEID on the dummy phone. You're gonna use a new flash Verizon SIM card. You're gonna set up a second line tied to that family plan and you're gonna take that SIM card and put it in your iPad and now you have data on your iPad. On Flash's end, it looks like that SIM card is in a phone, but it'll work. The same thing can be done with a mobile hotspot, like the little MiFi routers that people have. You can do that same trick to get those activated on T-Mobile or on Verizon. You use a dummy phone with a good SIM card, get the service active, put the SIM card in the iPad or in the little mobile hotspot, boom, you're rocking and rolling. Flash looks at it in their system, it looks like a phone but you're ready to go and it works. I have a, Ver I have a Verizon hotspot that's tied to my Flash Verizon uh, family plan. So I pay 15 bucks a month and it shares my 12 gigs between my iPhone and my little mobile hotspot. Now the last question, I saved this one for last. Uh, I won't get crazy in detail with this, but it says, can Flash users participate in the Apple upgrade program? This is a yes, but it is a very tricky process and this is not something that I recommend that you try and offer to a lot of customers because at the end of the day, if it's hard for a customer to be your customer, they're not gonna be your customer. If it's easy for them to be your customer, they'll be your customer. And what I mean by that is if, a, if you have a customer that wants to make, take advantage of the, of the Apple upgrade program, which what that is is they pay $25 a month or $35 a month or $45 a month, depending on which iPhone model they get, and then they're eligible every 12 months to get the new iPhone when it comes out. It's an amazing plan that Apple offers directly through Apple. The caveat is this. They, the only way it works is your customer has to buy the phone from Apple and they cannot, the phone has to be activated when the customer walks out of the store. So I've gone to Apple. We have a very good relationship with Apple. I've talked to them about this at length. This is how it works. Your customer would have to go into the Apple store. They would have to select the phone that they want to do. They make those monthly payments to Apple. So once they port their number to Flash, they're not going to get hit with that final bill. They're going to continue paying their $25 a month or whatever it is to Apple, and they'll still be able to upgrade their device every year. But what they have to do is when they go in and get the device, they have to sign up for service through Sprint, Verizon, T-Mobile, or AT&T before they can get on the payment plan and walk out the door. So do not have them port their number to that phone. You're gonna have them walk in, they're gonna sign up a new service with Sprint, Verizon, T-Mobile, or AT&T. They're gonna pay for the first month of service right there, they're gonna pay the first month of leasing the iPhone. When they walk out the door, they have 72 hours that they can call that carrier, they can cancel that new account, and they'll get a full refund of the money that they paid for the service up front. Then, at that point, they'll just get, Apple will bill their bank account every month for the monthly payment on that phone. Like I said, it's not a clean, it's not an easy way to do it, but it can be done. But it's a lot of work on the customer part and there's always a very good chance that the customer's either just gonna stay with whatever plan they sign up with or they just won't go through the hassle. So if you have a customer that wants to do it, that's how you do it. Or if you're a rep and you wanna do that for yourself, absolutely go do it. But I would not do that for someone who's just going to become a customer. So guys, that's really all that I have time to answer tonight. Again, I just wanna reiter reiterate the best thing that you could do is to become your own customer. I mean, how simple is it to have an extra phone on hand, it's active, you can show how the service works, you're 100% confident in putting in the order, you've done it, you know the steps, you know what to expect, and then just go out and get that Strive for Five because now that phone that you're carrying around to demonstrate with, it's free. I mean, the bill's paid for every month and that's the most powerful thing that I think you can offer. So guys, with that, uh, I really wanna say thank you to the Mazers, I wanna say thank you to Mr. Jeff, Jeff Street for giving me this opportunity to jump on your guys' call, to work with you guys. Um, if you have follow-up questions, you can post them to the video on Facebook. You can reach out to us, sellplatinum.com. Make sure you get on there and register your account, sellplatinum.com backslash rockstar. Or if you're on the West Coast working with Jeff, you're gonna go sellplatinum.com backslash rockstarwest. 
It's been an amazing time uh, to spend with you. There's a lot of comments. There'll be a lot of follow-up stuff. So with that, uh, Mr. Street, are you there for me to turn the call back to you? I am, Caleb. Can you hear me? Absolutely. I can hear you loud and clear. Awesome, my friend. Well, thank you so much for being on the line here today on behalf of the 